Hey guys, Drew the Cooch Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to be showing you guys a brand new PCGS submission that we just got back. Did we get the grades right? Did we get them wrong? We're going to talk about it in this video. We hope you guys enjoy. So as you know, the main point of PCGS submissions is to project or predict what you think the grade might be before you send it off. And then when you get them back, you get to show everybody, tell them if you're right, tell them if you're wrong. And so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to have a little side-by-side -side thing showing you guys what I predicted. And then we're going to pull the coin out and it's going to show you what it graded. So this allows me to reflect on myself and say, hey, what did I miss here? Why did it grade up or grade down from what I thought it would grade? And it also gives you guys a little bit of perspective of what you might see at your local coin show. Here's something I told myself yesterday that I think would be important to you guys, something a little bit off topic. If you focus on the controllables, you don't have to worry about the uncontrollables. And what does that mean, right? So there's certain things that you can do in a day to make your life better, to make it more fruitful, to uh, achieve more things, right? You can work harder, you can work out, you can eat the right things, you can get the right amount of sleep, you can get vitamins and minerals, you can learn more things, you can reach out to more people. There's so many people out there that focus so much on the uncontrollables. What's this person doing in the White House? What's this person doing on the football field? What's the egg price at the store? All those things are important, but they're not as important as what you can control yourself. So what I've been trying to focus on lately is my health, what I'm listening to, what I'm watching, what I'm creating, what I'm working on, how much I'm working, and who I'm hanging out with. If you focus on those things, over time, you'll start to say, hey, those uncontrollable things I used to worry about that used to give me so much anxiousness, anxiety, those things will all start to get very, very small as opposed to things that I can fix, change, and alter the course of. And so focus on the controllables and the uncontrollables will take care of themselves. But let's jump into these coins. We hope you enjoy. All right, guys. So just forewarning, all these coins are from our clients. We're shipping them back today, but I'm going to show you guys all the grades and what we projected First one is a 1916D. We're going to show you what PCGS graded it, then we're going to talk about what we thought it would be. So, 1916D graded G4 by PCGS. So the first four coins are from uh, a friend of ours, and he said, hey, just let me know what the grades are. And so I have it on a piece of paper where I told him the grades would be, and I said this grade would be either G or VG. I thought it was a, a good six, possibly, but I just went with G or VG. So it came back good four. I just love the detail on the helmet. I thought it was very strong. I thought it would be a G6 at least. But there is a little wear on the rim on the reverse, which probably held it back from a good 6. That's okay. Still a great coin. The next coin is an 1881cc. It is graded MS63 Dimple by PCGS. Really nice black and white fields. Had a few kind of wispy light hairlines in the fields and that's kind of what prompted me to guess three things on this coin. So I told him that it was either cleaned, 63 dimple or 64 dimple, but there's just a lot of kind of hits on the, on the face there. If it was a little bit more clean, I think it would be a 64 dimple, but we got it correct. The next coin is a 1909S VDB. And this coin is graded fine 12 by PCGS. These I'm trying to learn how to grade a little bit at a time. But we don't submit a lot of these coins in just because everything apart from the SVDB really is almost not worth sending in. You could sell it raw or uh, you could find a collector that would need it for maybe their book. But this graded fine 12, we graded a VF 20. So we were wrong. We overgraded it in our opinion, but that's okay. There's not actually a dramatic spread with these coins from like VF all the way down to Fine or, or VG. Uh, the next coin is this 21S Buffalo. Tougher date in XF. This one is graded VF30. Our guess to the collector was VF30 to VF35. And so pretty close to spot on. Has some streakiness. Has some still great remaining luster on the obverse. Not so much on the reverse. But a, definitely a nice VF30 either way. Now we have a few coins of our own. So this one, I bought at a shop, and I didn't realize there was a scratch on it, but whenever I submitted it, I did realize it. And so 
it's a. Uh, this is about what they said it would grade. Very good. They didn't tell me about the scratch. I didn't look at the scratch, and I bought it, and then I saw it like 20 minutes after, and I'm like, you know, let's just get in a holder. Let's take a big loss on this coin and sell it, and you know, it's still a better date, but has that big scratch right in the field right here, but still a better date, like I said, and I'm sure someone's going to love it. So we ended up buying this coin like a year and a half ago at a show. I think it was the the Oklahoma show. It was raw. The guy said, hey, this coin's XF. You should buy it. It was nice, original looking. Had some luster in, in the field still, as you can see right there. Uh, he said it was XF. I bought it as an XF, and it came back as an XF45. So decent little type coin and uh, nice and lovely the next coin is a key date proof franklin half so this is uh, a 1950 proof franklin half graded proof 65 i thought it'd be a proof 66 but i think we're splitting hairs here at proof 65 still a lovely coin and uh, nice flashy still has some you know what a gem should look like in proof or business strike just maybe a few little hits too much out in the fields here to give it that 66 grade. Then we have this 1939 proof uh, Washington quarter. A tad bit of a better date for proof Washington quarters. We graded this coin ourselves as a proof 64, came back as a proof 64. Most of the time, like we were talking about, you got to look for those hairlines. And you know, there's a few out in the fields. And uh, it was a little bit kind of, you could see this washed out gray, almost cloudiness on the reverse. And that kind of uh, held me back from going any higher. And I ended up doing pretty well. The next coin, we ended up not doing so well on ourselves. We graded this one a proof 63 or 4. But this one has residue on the obverse. We didn't like the residue when we showed it off raw. But that's okay. It's just something that we can learn from. And these aren't our coins, like we said. We're not paying for the grades. So, um, you know, it's us learning for free, practically. And the customer get to learn at their expense, but also get to have great coins for their collection. Here's a cool coin. So this is a 1976D Kennedy half dollar. Hard to show the color on this coin, but just beautiful album toning. We graded this ourselves as an AU58. And they gave it an AU58+. plus. Evidently, it was just right on the, on the precipice of Mint State. And then that color really gave it that bump to a 58+. plus. And so, very happy for our friend. He's going to keep that just because his dad, or granddad, I, I forget who. Um, that coin meant a lot to them, and he wants to show them that coin. This is a 1969D Kennedy half dollar. We graded this ourselves as a Mint State 65, and it came back as a Mint State 65. I think the customer wanted this coin to come back a 6 plus or a 7, but I just felt like there's too many hits here on the shield and a little bit too much going on on the head here. Most of the time you got to check those high points for those hits because they treated Kennedy half dollars like crap and the public did too. So most of the time they're going to have so many different problems and that's where that grade comes from. Here is an 1884-0 Morgan dollar, grade of Mid-State 63. Nice little color above the head there. I graded this one for the customer as a 63 plus. I thought the color would add a little bit more of a oomph to the grade, but it came back at 63, so not too crazy in terms of uh, grade, uh, you know, grade difference between us and uh, PCGS. Just a difference of opinion. Then we have a cool story to show you guys. So we have three coins that were cracked out of. PCGS Rattlers that were CAC approved. They were all Mint State 65. The first one is this ADS. Came back a 6. So I don't really want to crack Rattlers. I like Rattlers myself, but the customer said, hey, I cracked these out of Rattlers, and look, they all upgraded. So this ADS came back Mint State 66, and we graded this coin at 65 ourselves, but PCGS really liked this coin, and they must know a little bit more about dollars than me. And that's why it came back the grade it did. Very awesome. Then we have another neat coin here. This is a 1945 
Broad struck mercury dimes. So if you guys don't know, full band mercury dimes in 45 are very expensive. They're a little bit more affordable when they have an error like a broad struck or off center. And this one, if it's hard to see, but you guys can look up the true view later. Um, this coin really does look like it's full bands, and that's why our customer wanted to send it in. If it came back full bands, it'd probably be you know a few grand for this coin. But right now, as it sits, it's twenty dollars. But we grade this coin at sixty-four on our end uh, full bands. This one came back sixty-four plus, and so he says, "Hey, I'm gonna submit that one a few more times, see if I can get the grade that it needs." Here's the next Morgan dollar. This is an eighteen ninety-nine O, rated mint state sixty-six. The second one cracked out of a rattler in a sixty-five CAC, and you know, nice New Orleans mint. Beautiful coin, nice and flashy. What do we grade this coin here? We grade this coin at 65 plus. It came back at 66. So, uh, you know, it's good to undervalue or kind of uh, undergrade a coin rather than overgrade a coin. It's just so everybody's happy at the end of the day. And here's the big kahuna of the submission. This is an 1882S that came out of a 65 CAC Rattler holder. And it came back at 7. A 7. Wow. Beautiful coin. Surprise at seven, as the customer is also. But wow, beautiful coin. But this is the win of the submission by far. Then we have two other coins to wrap up today's video 1940 proof Washington quarter. I graded this one at proof 63 to 64, and it came back at proof 62. Splitting hairs here, not a lot of money between proof 62 to 64, but. It, uh, you know, I'm a little bit wrong. That's okay. If this is a 36 Washington quarter, I would need to be much more precise. But, uh, yeah, we were off on that one. And the last coin, I thought this one was unk details. I didn't like all the chatter and kind of, there's felt like hairlines out in the fields. Maybe it was polished lines. Not sure how PCGS saw it, but I graded this one unk details. It came back 63 and the customer wanted to come back proof-like. Definitely has some proof-like qualities, but I don't think it's just quite there. But, you know, hey, we were close, guys. Thank you so much for watching this PCGS unboxing. Man, dude, I was pretty spot on with these grades. I don't know about you guys, but it was a really good submission. I hope you guys enjoyed this submission video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Comment your thoughts on the coins. Did you enjoy them? And subscribe. Got videos coming out every single week. We want you guys to be a part. We will see you guys next time.